X299, wait. This is the MSI Creator X299. You're gonna wanna watch this. I promise. I'm not being weird, I'm just saying. You'll wanna see this. It comes extremely well packed and MSI sent me this a little ahead of schedule. The problem is I've got a single 10980 CPU also supplied by Intel, which is great. Thanks Intel. And I've also got this 7980XE that has been delitted. This CPU, I can overclock with custom loop to be higher performance than the 10980XE, but the plot thickens. I've been trying to buy a, a 14 core, 12 core, or 14 core on Newegg or Amazon since the 10 series CPUs launched. Now I've been able to pick up four other CPUs, not from the 10 series. And I look through the available socket, you know, X299 CPU, socket 2066 CPUs on Newegg, and I'm, there's a lot of seven and nine series CPUs, but the pricing is just insane. thousand dollars for a 10 core, $800 for an eight core. I, Intel's gonna have to offer some rebates. I don't know who the sellers are. I mean, in some cases it looks like Newegg is offering these CPUs, but I've really got a feel for MSI because it's gotta be putting these motherboard vendors in a completely impossible situation if no reasonably priced CPUs for this socket are available. Now, whether you know Intel is producing CPUs as fast as they possibly can or there are other availability issues, I've been trying to order stuff with a robot. And usually I'm pretty good at that. And I have not been able to acquire a 10 series CPU for more than $100 over MSRP. So about 1050 for the uh, 10980XE. One place I wasn't looking for CPUs was on Silicon Lottery. I'm told that Silicon Lottery actually had a pretty good uh, bundle of the, the not like the lower tier, like retail price 10980XEs, but I was hoping to get the 12 or the 14 core because I think the way that Intel has those priced for certain kind of workstation uses, it's a pretty good deal. And I love the features on this motherboard for that kind of a work, you know, you're gonna build a developer station. There's that whole Android Studio compatibility problem on the competing platform, although that's fixed. It's fine now. There are certain reasons, like don't be a fanboy. Just don't be a fanboy. At around $1,000 for the CPU, this is 18 cores is a very, 18 cores at $1,000 is not a bad deal. And if you've got a few other constraints, things like memory capacity or uh, other things like that, then it's not a bad deal necessarily. I, I can't believe I have to say that, but there's so many people. All right, so this board is well packed. As I said before, the other thing that's gonna be super nice about this board is that it has an ample VRM situation. It has triple eight pin. Yeah, that's just that's just silly. That's MSI having a couple extra bins of eight pin connectors and they're like, man, what are we gonna do with those? I was like, I know, we'll put them on this board. This board layout is pretty good. You've got four slots, it's by 16 by eight, by 16 by eight. You know, keep in mind that if you've got, I mean, Intel did make some four core CPUs for this socket. Don't try to use a KB Lake four core CPU with modern X299 motherboards. You're gonna need an, a launch day X299 motherboard if you're gonna try that, but it's definitely ill-advised. This board also has U.2, which is great because of the Intel, high-performance Intel NVMe drives that I picked up on eBay. So this will make a great, great workstation. It's got USB-C, 30-pin header at the front edge, 30-pin header at the bottom edge of the motherboard, so dual 30-pin headers. We've also got auxiliary 12-volt input, so if you are gonna run a lot of GPUs off of this motherboard, there is an auxiliary 12-volt line on this board for you to be able to do that. The IO shield, the rear IO shield at the back, it's built in. And look, we've got one, two, four, six, seven, eight, 10 USB, one of which is a type C. It's a mix of five and 10 and some even USB 2.0. We've got a BIOS flash buttons and a clear CMOS button, our Intel Wi-Fi 6 solution and a combo PS2 keyboard and mouse port. We've got our Realtek ALC1220 audio solution with an optical SPDIF port, our 10 gig of Quantia LAN and then an Intel NIC as well, an Intel one gigabit, I think it's an i219. This motherboard does have the Intel VROC RAID header. Although I've noticed that the VROC RAID seems to be unlocked. We've got some Samsung SSDs. Seem to work fine without the VROC key. Don't know if that's an oversight. Don't know if I should be mentioning that in the video. Your mileage may vary. Officially, a VROC key is gonna be required if you're gonna run M.2 RAID. But these modern motherboards, 
in terms of M.2 RAID are gonna be a better choice because the M.2 slots, not all of them, but more of them are routed directly to the CPU. And some of the launch date boards, none of the M.2 slots went directly to the CPU. It'd be bottlenecked through the DMI. See, all of the peripherals that go through the chipset here, the, the link from the chipset to the CPU is only PCI Express by four. It's an equivalent, it's a DMI 3.0, but it's four gigabytes per second. So all of the USB and SATA and everything that's going through the chipset is limited in aggregate to four gigabytes per second. A modern M.2 NVMe can saturate that. In terms of performance, 3D Mark Firestrike, the overall score is 10,387. These are stock, you know, stock 10,980 scores. Unigen Superposition 1080p Extreme is 4138, 30.95 FPS on average. Cinebench R20 is 8071. Pavre 3.7, 6297. Ada 64, 74, 477 for read and 65, 840 right and 81.1 nanoseconds on the latency. That's out of the box with a completely stock and not overclocked position now. In terms of memory benchmarks, you can overclock the memory. You can get 85, 90, 95 gigabytes per second on your quad channel configuration with a latency more like mm, 68 nanoseconds. It's really good. So this is our Thunderbolt header interface, because remember, in the box, you've got the Thunderbolt adapter, which is the in-the-box Thunderbolt adapter and the in-the-box M.2 expander are a large part of the cost of this motherboard. You could get an alternative motherboard from MSI that doesn't come bundled with this PCIe add-in cards and save a few bucks, but for building a creator workstation, Thunderbolt storage, <coughs> gosh, <coughs> uh, you know, your M.2 RAID, that kind of thing, it's maybe nice to have those accessories. Look at this, a movable Wi-Fi antenna. This should be standard issue. The rubber duck antennas are no more. Don't wanna see them, especially on a premium product. I'll show you why these are so good. Intel Wi-Fi 6, and you can physically place this antenna anywhere you like. It's a good setup. Here is our Thunderbolt card. It's dual display port input. Here's your Thunderbolt interface header that's gonna plug into your motherboard. There is no auxiliary power input. So if you get one of the USB-C powered uh, you know, VR headsets or something like that. The output on these USB-C ports is limited to about 25 watts in experimental testing, so. And finally, this is our M.2 Aero expander. It has four M.2 interfaces. This is a PCI Express by 16, so you can do your PCI Express bifurcation. This would plug into this slot only if you are going to have a GPU and an X16 slot and you're gonna use all four slots. If you're only gonna use two slots, you could use it in any of the other three slots. So out of the box with your graphics card, this motherboard's only gonna have one free expansion slot, which is really my only complaint. The Aero Expander also has an extra auxiliary analog temperature sensor in the box, in the bag, ever how you wanna look at that. So if you want to physically monitor the temperature of this by taping a temperature sensor to the heatsink, you can totally do that. Now the interesting bits. This is deleted CPU, which I'm not holding correctly, which is bad. That is a big old piece of silicon for 18 cores. When you have a deleted CPU in this kind of a situation, you actually have to unscrew the CPU socket. When you reinstall the socket, be careful not to install it upside down, because that would be exceptionally bad. He's joking. Nobody's that dumb. And you want to go corner to corner when you're tightening this down, because this mechanism is the mechanism that mashes the CPU into the socket. Each one of those little pins is a spring. And there we are. While the 10980 is away on a side mission, we're gonna outfit this thing with the 7980. This is the system with the XSPC custom cooling. It's a custom loop, it's a Raystorm Pro block. It works especially well with the delitted 7980. Astonishingly well. Love motherboards with the pre-installed backplate. Ta-da! Blam! It's just that easy. Linux compatibility. We always like to talk about Linux compatibility. In terms of sensors, clocking, Intel Turbo Boost, yeah. Actually, all that stuff works fine in Linux. I use a GNOME utility called CPU Freak. CPU FREQ, it's a really good utility. It lets you control Turbo Boost and whether or not you wanna uninstall IRQ balance and monitor your system and make sure that Turbo Boost is working correctly and that kind of thing. You can get some insight to make sure that your system's operating correctly and it's boosting correctly and all that kind of thing. Even with the overclocking, fairly stable. 
The X299 platform is extremely mature at this point. It is an incredible rarity in the industry that we have third generation motherboards coming out for this platform. So of course the NIC and the sound card and all the peripherals are gonna work perfectly on Linux, pretty much out of the box. The Wi-Fi 6 is the only thing that you have to worry about because it's a relatively new chipset, but any modern distro is gonna be able to handle that relatively trouble free. IOMMU groups, if you're gonna run virtualization, this would be a great board for it because you've got two slots that are X16. X8 really though is enough for, for just about any kind of virtualized, you know, hardware pass through workload that you would be doing. And of course the M.2 and the chipset lanes and the X8 and X16 lanes, they're all broken into their own IOMMU groups. The only thing that was a little odd was two of the M.2 on board were in the same IOMMU group on mine initially, but I did a BIOS update that seemed to break them out. So good job, MSI, a little odd, but uh, good job, MSI. You can have you know the 10 gig NIC for your host operating system and the one gig NIC for your guest operating system. It's a really good choice for virtualization. And of course, Intel's uh, compiler and tools and things like that are, are really good. But like I say, I feel bad for board partners like MSI because they've got a great brand new X299 motherboard. I mean, this is a refresh. There's lessons learned here, tried and true stability and a thousand dollars for 18 cores, 950 MSRP for 18 cores is actually a deal. But you know, here we are the middle of January, 2020, and I still can't buy a 10980XE and the 7000 series, if you look on Newegg or Amazon, the prices for the 7 and 9000 series CPUs, there, there doesn't seem to be a rebate. Maybe it's old stock, but you should not buy those old CPUs at those prices. It is insane. Like $600 for an eight core. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like there's not, wait. Nobody's that desperate. Just wait, get a 10 series CPUs because the pricing on those 10 series CPUs, I mean, it's really good compared to the pricing on the seven and nine series CPUs. And this is a great motherboard. This is gonna make a great workstation. Really happy with what MSI did with their X299 creator. It's a solid board, even with the crazy overclocks. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. Gonna go play with my new Linux box. I'll see you later.